duration. There's be the possibility of a very short delay as a result of the rollover of the Super Ute just a few moments ago. So cars at 45 degrees about to roll out. It's actually gone down to about 21 degrees out there at the moment and feels like 18 because the wind is from the south. It got up as high as the high 20s earlier on in the day and there was a fair bit of humidity around as Jess was saying a few moments ago. But boy, did it swing and change in a hurry. Details thanks to Virgin Australia up on screen for our final destination of the 2019 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship season. A little over 2,600 metres of highly energised racetrack around here. Unbelievable place for all of the supercar community to wind up the championship season in grand style for our third visit to this location. We're a couple of hours to the north of Sydney in this marvellous city that really welcomes supercars year in and year out. It's become a classic instantaneously. Very low average speed around here. Wide open throttles just at a little under 40% of the lap. 134 kilometres an hour is the average speed, but it's where the cars do it and how they do it that's really the impressive thing. So it's a short, sharp run down towards turn one. Very easy to lock a brake and end up in the tyre wall down there, and the curbing on the inside is a trap. Climbing the hill on Watt Street up to the top of the hill, and then this marvellous run all the way down through the Shortland Esplanade area. It's a whole series of S's, and I mean, it's almost impossible to explain some of what goes on here. There's camber variations, the painted white lines, there's manhole covers, there's concrete walls, there's everything. And then into the left-hander at Zara Street, right-hander at Scott Street, left-hander to Nobby's Road, building speed again to 220 odd Ks, fifth gear through turn 10. A lot of instability with the cars around here because they're rocking and rolling under brakes in the newly extended apex down there at turn 11. Second gear, punching out of there into the right hand at turn 12 the final corner three sectors and they're marked up in the colors for you at the moment and you can see the flags flying on the top of the pit complex and hospitality area and the virgin paddock club and cars about to roll out including warren luff who among other things this weekend is driving in the toyota 86 racing series so if you wanted a contrast of racing devices luffy's got it going there at the moment he'll be driving scott pye's car car number two for walkinshaw andretti united the mobile one racing entry and I did give him a little tap on the shoulder because inadvertently he's working for me this week. And I went, hang on, it's the wrong shirt. <laughs> but anyway, he looked a bit startled for a moment, then grinned and realised that I was taking it from him. So uh, he's out there in car number two, so do not adjust your sets. Warren Luff will be out there. He's already done a mighty job in the Pertec Enduro Cup this year, so it's an easy step for him to take inside the garage and leap into these cars. He's very familiar with what's going on. That's the view from the... Just above their pit bunker down there at Walkinshaw Andretti United and had a quick word with James Courtney. They're just fiddling with some suspension changes this weekend as well with their car just to understand uh, its behaviour. And so far, so good. In fact, if you look at the speed of the cars in that first session, uh, pretty impressive when you consider that the track hadn't rubbered in in those early days. Huh? There's some amazing sights in and around this location. So the fastest time was 1 minute 10.6092. That was McLaughlin. And if you go back to the lap record, uh, that's Reynolds on a 10.6403, so basically equaling lap record pace. The qualifying record's held by Scotty, he did a 9.9, and uh, they do that in the first session when the track's dirty and they don't necessarily have 30 seconds. awesome tyres at that point. So Cam's race director, Tim Schenken, makes the call to prepare everybody now for this session. It's amazing scenes, and there is Cam's race control around here. You've got Newcastle Beach, you've got Fort Scratchley, you've got Nobbies, you've got the Hunter River, uh, this city by the sea and a famous location in New South Wales. And thanks to everybody at Destination New South Wales for their support. And just a reminder, in case you're wondering, uh, pretty uh, smoky conditions out there at the moment because of the awful situation. Fires not very far from here, in fact, on the mid-north coast of New South Wales, up into south-east Queensland, troubles in Victoria and South Australia as well. So the supercars community is jumping to the fore. A lot of the teams have come up with their own ways of raising money and uh, you've heard about some of that on air already and no doubt you can find more on the Supercars website as well if you want to jump in. There's some great merchandise and memorabilia and odds and ends. So if you'd like to jump in as this community has done to help some of those Australians at the moment who are doing it pretty tough, then please do so. But the weather conditions here at the moment, much cooler, pretty smoky, very windy as Markscape walks back into the box. And so, one down, one to go in terms of practice. Next time we see the cars, Mark, it's Armour all qualifying, qualified for the top 10 shootout. So they play for keeps come tomorrow for our last two big races of the year where anything can happen. They certainly do, Pompo. We love this layout. You just explained a lot of the nuances of this street circuit. Just on your fire relief, I was looking earlier 
detail Tim Penske have offered so many of the parts from Scott McLaughlin's car at the Gold Coast and the bonnet got to about $14,000 so fantastic for everybody to participate and to assist so many of those people around the country that are doing it very tough our thoughts are with them and this session so when you get into the back end of practice two thinking about qualifying first up tomorrow we're going to see some rehearsals for qualifying in the last 10 or 15 minutes which i love the thought of given the dynamics of this racetrack and how hard it is to put a lap together here there's very unforgiving nature and all different surfaces all different styles of corners this one here i call the hero corner it's roughly 200 and 20k as you fire down the hill there into this slow left hand of the slowest corner and it's got a really unique character and we love it. Murph? Yes, Gary, just want to continue on the theme with our teams doing great things for the bush fire appeal for all those people that are suffering out there. Welcome to Andretti United, along with their partners, appliances online, and well, I think Bosch are involved in this one as well, uh, contributing an uh, amazing donation. Ryan, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so um, obviously, like every single person in Australia, we've been, you know, incredibly humbled by seeing the, the horrible devastation that's happening out in uh, out in uh, New South Wales with the wildfires. We've seen people losing their homes, people losing their lives. So it's only a small thing, um, but with our, our friends from Appliances Online uh, and with our friends at Bosch, you know, we're going to be uh, donating twenty thousand dollars worth of appliances uh, to the charity Give It. We're going to be using Appliances Online legendary service to actually deliver those uh, goods over to the people who really really need it right now. It's amazing and John winning from winning appliances mate this, this is something that's touching everybody in Australia well around the world but Australia uh, mostly it's great that you can be involved. Yeah absolutely I mean it's we're all human beings we're all Australians and we just want to do our part to help out you know it's, life's about ups and downs and you know at the moment we're going through a really tough time uh, as a country and the fires are devastating and we just want to do whatever we can and you know it, like uh, Ryan said it, it, it is our only our little bit but it, if everyone can do their little bit and give to give it then uh, you know hopefully a lot of little things will add up to a big thing and we can hopefully ride this wave together and and get through this tough time it's going to be uh, amazing to see how all this plays out but it's great that our teams are involved in supporting those that have uh, lost their homes yeah thanks greg it is and ryan walkinshaw from walkinshaw and ready united is the director of that race team and obviously a familiar face in our paddock and the chief executive of the winning group and founder of appliances online john winning there as well so great support and that media release came out uh, between practice sessions and the Shelby Power Racing team are doing their bit as are Fox Sports and Supercars Australia as well. So Warren Luff at the helm here. Saw him running wide when Murph was having a chat a few moments ago down at Turn 11. So he's a busy boy and the work rate will have gone up somewhat compared to when he was last out there about an hour ago in a very different car. Exactly. And what an assignment. I mean, a little while ago he was driving a Toyota 86 and all of a sudden you're leaping around curbs and sliding between walls and trying to navigate your way around this very tricky layout in a car that is approaching at warp speed in comparison so it's a pretty tough gig for him he, he always does a good job as you said earlier with the Pertec Enduro Cup he drove very well so Luffy at the helm and remember Scott Pye that was very close there for James Courtney he just wiped the left hand mirror off and we just had to wipe the it didn't actually come off there it wiped it back off on Cam Waters Mustang that was a nice slide. We saw so many images of that big slide coming on the straight throughout the course of the first session. That was Andre Heimgartner. Champagne Gisberg has now just done the fastest first sector. David Reynolds pretty much replicated the time that he did in the previous session of 10.6. Yeah, so Reynolds has done a 10.68 in that first session today. He did a 10.62 on on Sunday here last year. He had the pole and went on to win the race at the back end of the year. Van Gisberg has just done a 10.3. That's the fastest time of the day, and that's getting down towards qualifying speed. Yep. And the record that McLaughlin has held here from previous visits. So 9.9 was that number. So immediately energising the times out there and getting on with it. Um, as I said, as you were coming back to the commentary box, Mark, noticeably cooler out there now, and that breeze is pretty vigorous. It's 30 to 40 kilometres an hour from the south. It's not a track where I expect that you're going to have a huge amount of wind effect, but it always has an effect on a racing car, particularly where there's wings and aero involved. Courtney there, 10-9. So 
there being Gisberg and Winkup, McLaughlin, Reynolds, De Pasquale, Waters, Holdsworth, Slade, Courtney, Hazelwood. So a couple of good solid top ten results last year for James. He came home in seventh on Saturday and fifth on Sunday in car number 22. And it's a big and emotional weekend for him this weekend because it's, it's the end of the road for him uh, with Walkinshaw and Andretti United having joined the team with you back in the old days when it was the Holden Racing Team and you first gave him an endurance drive at Sandown way back when. And uh, that was a huge moment in his career in, I think, was that 2005 or six? Yeah. And, uh, and he's really made a home at that team and he's been various other teams full time and he's on the move to what will become Team Sydney next year. And he's a Penrith boy. Lee Holdsworth on screen here has also been in the news in the last 24 hours because Tickford Racing have announced that Lee will be staying for the next couple of years, which is a huge validation. It takes a lot of pressure away from the driver when they know what tomorrow looks like. And Truck Assist is going to be backing that entry going into the new season. And there's Lee on the approach to turn two. And look what I found in the pit lane right here at Boost Mobile Racing. Legend in, on two wheels, Chad Reid, not far from home. It must be great to be here in Newcastle when, uh, you know, your hometown's just up the road. Oh, it is. It was uh, the first time they came here last year. I was, I was so jealous. I watched it live on TV. I, watch, I literally watched one race a year live. I watch them all, but I watched one live, and that's about this. But I uh, watched Newcastle last year, so it was awesome. Are you spending a bit of time in cars too these days, uh, venturing into the four-wheel market? Yeah, it's funny, you know, like venturing back here and looking at the squiggly lines again and, and obviously having a better understanding of it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting watching the boys live, uh, live tamage really and kind of understanding what's happening. Still got a bit of a dream to race one of these, mate? Uh, a dream to race it, yes. The reels don't let it happen. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's, it, that'd be a tall ask at 37 years old to come back and I don't, I don't have it in me to go and throw myself at a whole nother career, so I think sports cars in the US is probably a better fit. Yeah, uh, big talk next week, Monster Energy SX Open in Melbourne. It's going to be live on Fox Sports. You're going to be there, though. That is a huge event. It went off in New Zealand last week. It did, and, uh, and unfortunately, I had a rib injury, two broken ribs from the week before in Paris. Um, but honestly, my decision not to race was really based on trying to heal up from Melbourne, you know? Uh, Obviously, it's a big one. It's my one event in, in Aussie a year, and, and uh, it's really it's really important to me to come out and, and do well. So hopefully, uh, in a week and a half of healing, I'll be fine. Mate, I hope you are there. The, threat, the crowd is going to be huge. They're going to love it. Obviously, seeing you race there again in Melbourne too. So uh, get your tickets, get down, and watch it live or watch it on Fox Sports, mate. Great to see you here uh, for the weekend. Thanks, mate. And uh, if I need tips, I'll come ask you. I watched you last week. You got a bit of game. I was really good. <laughs> Chad Reed, great to have him in the crowd here this weekend uh, and down there in the garage with the Boost Mobile boys and what a legend of Supercross and motocross racing and his AMA Supercross career in the US and his motocross starts and all of the things that he's done. I could stand here all day and run through a ridiculously long list of success that he's had and he continues to punch on to this day. Uh, and how's Greg giving him a slap on the back? And he's just said a couple of minutes ago he had broken ribs. Yeah, yeah. So yeah that was great. That's very kind of him. <laughs> Will Davison on screen here. <laughs> in the Milwaukee racing entry. And so where's Will at the moment? He's sitting all the way down the order and on that lap that we've just picked up the completion of it, he's moved up 14 spots to 10th position. He's done a 10-9 in Van Gisburg and still got the premium number here at 10-3. I just heard Scotty say on the radio, I like the car, I'm happy with the car, put tyres on it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when they throw a good tyre at car 17. 97. Van Gisberg in the 10.37, his teammate Wink up with a 10.51, McLaughlin with a 10.6. So remember that it's basically the same time as he did this morning, with a 10.60, and now he's in a 10.61. That's probably on the same tyre. And to your point, normally in the afternoon this place would be slower, but because it's got cooler and it's got a reasonable cover of UV, it's probably better than we think in terms of conditions. Yeah, it's more smoke than cloud, but it'll have the same effect. Now, one of the curiosities, looking at this guy on screen at the moment, Mark, in the super chip auto car, Chaz Mostert, he's one of the group of lasts this weekend because it's expected to be his last run with Tickford before he's on the move. No podium, no top five for Chaz. You wouldn't have thought, if I just said to you without looking at data in the background, you know, has he had a podium here? Has he had a top? You go, yeah, because he's sure. typically got four yep. of these sorts of places. It's not been the case. He had a shocker on the Saturday last year, came home seventh on the Sunday, but it's not been a place that he's particularly clicked with one way or another. But uh, 
got on the podium at Sandown together with James Moffat, which was a nice breakthrough for those guys. And David Reynolds is up the escape road here in the Penrite Racing entry for Erebus. Right, selecting first, and then go back to reverse again. That's, that's reverse. He's gone down there all the way next and been joined by a friend down there, and he's down there near the television compound. So he's gone off in the runoff one. area at turn one. So we were just saying he couldn't get reversed, but he must have done that before. Sometimes you've got to move them a little bit in order to be able to then be able to engage the reverse gear position. Back to McLaughlin. He's got the rigger on into the braking area at turn 11. He loves to just run it right up against the fence. There have been a couple of drivers that have been chancing their luck on how far they can get them against that wall on the run down there now, which has just changed somewhat. So lights it up in second gear off the final corner to the line. And what's this looking like? It's a 10 6 for him. Um, bit of radio intel for Scott in the background just to tell him about the traffic down there at turn one, and they'll bring him in and potentially put those tyres. So David's doing a 19 point turn down there, and in fact, now they've gone red flag for him. Now, because this is practice and not qualifying, it doesn't have any consequences, but in qualifying, it would. You remember the Austin Powers movie when Austin was having real yes. trouble and the yes. walls were too close? And yes. Same? Looking very similar based on the number of shots that Davies had at it. <laughs> I actually only saw that the other night. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> All we need is the sound effects yeah, for it, it Dave. Uh, in the team's championship, because this is the thing that's going to be the biggest talking point for the weekend, as you see Wink up there folding that left-hand mirror back, Fabian Coulthard has just come up to position two. So Van Gisbergen from Fabian. Fabian's now a 10 4 8. So that's welcome news for Shell V Power fans because Fabian and Scott will be working hard to try to keep the Red Bull Holden Racing team at bay this weekend for the team's championship. Uh, and we're just watching from the outside there that uh, I didn't think it actually took the cover off it before. Maybe that's a different one. Huh. I think that, it's, that there'll be multiple to choose from, yes. and that'll be an increasing stock through the weekend. Here's Reynolds and what happened to him at one. So he made the right decision. There's a point where you have to quit when you're running into turn one there, because if you offer it up to the corner, it's a big chance to headbutt the tyre bundle. And then here he is just trying to get that reverse. He's so there's a little lever. He's oh. Austin. It didn't sound nice, did it? So often you've got to put it back into first gear and just move it a little bit, because the dogs don't line up in the gearbox. So. So there's a little handle just on the... Yeah, this It's harsh. And it's stalled. So... Well, it could, it probably turned it off to do it. Yeah. So it doesn't launch that so hard. But this is this is now a replay of your Woolworths car park. Right, yeah. 25 goes of getting <laughs> in the spot. Is he actually out of there? I don't it? know, he's still there. He's still down there. You grow a beard by the time he gets out. It is Movember. <laughs> Van Gisberg and Coulthard win cup. Fabian was saying a few moments ago, it's a real wake up call when you get here, with just how rough it is. You know, you, you, Sandown's a rough racetrack. They've come from the Gold Coast where you, you kind of create the roughness because you throw them over the curbs. But this is a real jolt because it's the differences side to side here. You know, one side of the car will be tracking along and it's got its feet on the ground. The other side is just all, all hell breaking loose. And so you've got to try and find out where to put the car, which isn't necessarily the geometrically perfect position. It's not like you just get a, a ruler and a pencil out here and start making nice arcs and go, this is what you do from a textbook standpoint. Yeah. You've got to actually do it quite differently, don't you? That's what you just said. We just refresh the tyres and go again. I don't know how to do what we go now. Bad noise. Did you yeah, hear that? Yeah, I did. It's a lot of bad noises. <laughs> he is a world champion rat bag. Yeah. We only went trackside yesterday, and the, the funny thing was, I spotted him driving a Suzuki Swift, and he said, "Oh, did you see me in that?" He, was, he, he wasn't really liking it. Uh, so he's talking about funny. the transaxle, which in these cars is a combination of a differential <laughs> and a gearbox all in one. Hits up the back of the car, and David's very technical dissertation at debrief because it's making a lot of really bad noises. And it's because he's been grinding it to death up there trying to find reverse. And it's not as easy, we're making a joke of it, but sometimes, as Mark said, just to get the dogs to align in the box in order to be able to grab the gear 
and to get the thing to move it takes a little bit of coaxing and uh, he was awkwardly parked up thus the 14 point turn <laughs> i'm sure we'll hear about it later so out they go again the session's gone green with uh, 17 <laughs> minutes and 25 seconds remaining <laughs> and uh, we'll see whether or not those evil sounds it's a funny little bloke yeah. he's, he's a classic got some wiring issues just run up what street? Don't. Don't. Say it. We don't actually often look at the elevation change and see how uphill that is, but the braking area at the end of the straight is very aggressive and conversely coming back down the hill on Shortland Esplanade, you've got to be very careful to not overdo the turn six section there. You can see below the New South Wales government sign. When you turn it to the right, you've got to use a lot of that curve, but not use too much to the left because it makes the turn into Zara Street at the bottom of the screen, makes that too tight, which is where Nick Perkett went off in the first session today. And then even the downhill run from turn 10 into turn 11, Neil's laughing at his own gag. He was going to do a what, a, a what gag. When I said what street, he was going to go what, and then he started this whole thing going. Now he's lit up his phone and he's doing Austin Powers. You're going to focus on the race cars at all? Are you? Well, they're on a warm-up lap, so I'm easily distracted. <laughs> Seriously. You know, Shane Van Gisberg is the fastest. I am going to send it to Reynolds. OK. Yeah, send it to him, exactly. Send it to... He might even answer it now, because he's always on the phone. As Anton makes his way down this amazing run, it's sort of the signature part of this racetrack. Right there is Newcastle Surf Club. And then into Zara Street. This is all resurfaced from that line there. You can see where the surface change was. In across the curb, through eight, and then down the run. And this sort of roller coaster into Nobby's Beach. And what you said before about the bump, probably the most pronounced bump on the whole racetrack is right there. And you see the car's bottom on the way into that left hander, and they've got to brake and slide the car through turn 10 to get it stopped for turn 11. This is the final corner now, turn 12. It's got a lot more camber, a lot more browning on the road than almost any of the other racetracks that we've done. The other spot that's deceivingly awkward in its approach is actually right here at turn one. Uh, because just, oh, he's actually whacked the wall there, Anton, uh, pretty hard. He got the tyre bundle on the outside pretty firmly then. So that was timely to pick him up right at that moment as we go back to McLaughlin. That run into one's awkward because it, it's not a straight shot at the corner. And then even when you try and park the car up on the right, there's a lot of crowning there. There's a manhole cover. And it's also very different left to right there as well. And so that's why a lot of people end up making little braking errors going into one, like that one that you saw a moment ago with Anton. Scafer, you talk about the level of camber on the road, and I guess with that goes the, the bumps and gradients. What I'm seeing down here in this session early on is a lot of work on tyre pressures. And, uh, I try and peer over the shoulders of the boys and girls who use the tyre pressure gauge where possible and just get a bit of a gauge. And I can say they certainly are trying to get away with them on the lower side here as they possibly can. Um, there's no really long loaded corner apart from the one right over the back, but at the other end of the spectrum, trying to run them low to comply with the road surface, run as much camber as you can on the car, uh, is going to be the hot ticket. So a lot of work, and just as I speak now, you're going to see teams about to put green tyres on. No one has gone out yet, I've seen, on a green tyre about to happen. Yeah, that's good. I, I like this last 13, 14 minutes that we're about to see. This is this mistake from Anton. This actually hits quite hard. Hit the inside curve too hard, didn't it? Yeah, it started a little further back, yep. and then that changes the direction of the car off the curb, and that, that's given the right front guard, possibly the right front wheel, and tyre a bit of a tweak here as well, because he's gone in at a reasonably acute angle. The really substantial tyre bundle down there to try and mitigate any damage up against the wall there. See how much of the curb that he took, and then yeah, it flies. Well, By the time it eventually lands, there's no time left to steer it out of the corner. Great shot for the shooters down there on the outside of, of turn one. So the cars look unbelievably lively here, and one of the great traits of this racetrack is that supercar customers can get right up pretty close and see what's going on. You can really see the drivers working the cars vigorously here. That is Anton Di Pasquale. Remember that last year here was debut year you know you remember you know just 
that the guy's actually been out there uh, performing so strongly this year, generating podiums and doing all sorts of good things, but it's still really, really early in his career. He's only done 60 supercar races, and you know, we talk about him as though he's a bit of a veteran. Last year was the first shot for him at this location, and he's done some pretty impressive things so far this year, and earned an ongoing position in that team uh, for the future, which is awesome. He's a very good operator, isn't he? A couple of established people in the pit lane have done a lot with Anton over the years. Mark Larkham did a lot for him, and so has Paul Morris in recent times. And they spotted his talent early on, and he's continued to deliver. He's a very talented young man, Murph. A lot of people need to do a lot of work with Anton after Mark Larkham spent time doing work with him, didn't they? Exactly. A lot of repair jobs had to be done. There's a bit of a repair job needs to be done here too on this one, but I just checked with Barry Ryan and uh, steering's fine. I think as you saw, just the last part of when he clipped that uh, tie barrier down there, and he had, had a fair bit of left hand down on it, so the steering wheel was pointed in the right direction, which I think's probably saved any uh, you know, geometric stuff down here on the front. So everything's straight on there. They've got a set of green tyres here ready to go too, so expect to see those go on very, very shortly. But other than a uh, bit of sticker work, she's all good on the 99. So he didn't just kiss the wall. Sorry, mate. He didn't just kiss the wall. Oh, well done. Sorry. Bit slow. I was very slow on that one. Well, did you think of that scapey or did someone pass that on to you? I could pass on to me. You did. It was our, it was our, our, our director, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, very good. Took me a while, but slow. It's yeah. fun. Always uh, was. It's a Kiwi, Kiwi component, mate. You can't do much about that. Yeah, it's nearly 9-9 yeah. nine -nine time in New Zealand, so it's understandable. <laughs> so we've got just inside uh, 11 minutes to run now in this session. And uh, oh, what's happening here? So Heimgartner and Van Gisbergen having a little exchange of uh, aggravation up there in the run into turn two. So what's happening here? So yeah, Gizzy's gone in there a little bit hot, and turn one is Made contact with that outside tyre barrier as well. He's still on top with a 10-3, which he did really early in the piece. And uh, Andre, who's the best of the Nissans at the moment, is sitting in seventh in car seven. And Warren Luff, who's on screen here now on that lap that he just completed, has actually moved up into 19th position between Rick Kelly and in front of Mark Winterbottom. So given that he just literally rolled out, had to figure his way, he's actually doing a pretty fine job, isn't he? He is. Really good job. So have a look at that massive margin between Van Gisbergen and McLaughlin. It's only 0.02. So Van Gisbergen to McLaughlin, Fabian Coulthard, Winkup, Reynolds, Waters, Heimgartner, Dick Squally, Slade and Mostert. And remembering this weekend, we go out of today into qualifying straight up tomorrow. So this is the last hit out. This will be now new tyres for McLaughlin. So this will be an interesting lap to have a look at. And then we've got a top 10 shootout in this place a very difficult racetrack to read the grip level but also to do a nice lap without making the slightest error especially the run into here turn one is hard to get the braking area to be nice and get the car turned oh there you go straight off Lucko? yeah no well i was just only going to add to that there you are on new rubber very hard to get again we talk about tire pressure really hard to get these things up to temp not everyone put tires on as fast as i thought they would have lee holdsworth i've just seen has gone out so let's keep an eye on him uh, Scott McLaughlin went out all on his own and early, which was a little unusual on the first level. Yeah, and probably a little bit earlier than we've seen in the recent past. And this weekend represents the end of the road for for uh, Gary Rogers. And uh, Betty's sporting a, a the shirt end of there. the road for him. Hmm? It's not the end of the road. For well, him. for supercars. Oh, it? yeah, yeah, not yeah. Just be nice. Oh, yeah. Well, it does. You've signed the card, I've signed yeah. the card, but you know, he's going to continue motor racing. He's just not going to be uh, in this paddock in the short term. So nice to see Betty Klemenko just supporting this funny character. I saw, saw him this morning. He's a crazy self. Yeah. I've never quite forgiven him for jumping onto our Friday night program at Bathurst a few years ago, dressed as whatever he was. He was a possum or a wombat or a kangaroo or something. <laughs> Carmen Miranda or whatever he was. Or all of those things. <laughs> getting over it. So, curiosity on the motor racing side here is what's actually going to happen now with McLaughlin and will the tyres now over pressure given that he started a lap, they would have actually had their pressures up a little bit to begin with anyway. So can he redeem anything out of this lap is really the question. And he's had tremendous success here. So he's had wins in both 17 and 18 and a couple of poles in, in 2017. So he's got it wired at this place. 2017 
17 2018 represented just the all time 180 degree switch, didn't they? 17 was the ultimate nightmare in your career, and 18 was the ultimate you know, box ticked and the journey completed. This is Julian Wilson. In the background is Luke Egan. Luke does a lot of work with Julian, superstar surfers. And one of the things that we've actually got in our Foxfire relief caricature that the guys have had done for the weekend is actually a, a shot of Mark Richards and Julian Wilson and Luke Egan all surfing off the coast here. It's a famous surfing spot and those gentlemen uh, depicted in that. They're going for a run this afternoon actually Compo, so that'll be fun for those guys to jump in the car and have a run around. Temporarily switch sports. Yes, exactly. So Fabian's just moved up to a 10-4 fourth position. So 10-3 is Van Gisbergen, 10-3 is McLaughlin, 2-1 oh. hundredths of a second. And he's, he's out of moves down there now, so he cannot possibly run up any closer to that. So the lights are on. He's having a crack on this tyre set. They're probably a little bit overinflated. But is this enough to be able to knock off the time that Van Gisbergen did? No. Pretty darn close, though. Six one thousandths of a second away from the time that his countryman Shane Van Gisbergen did. So Winterbottom, excellent work in position three. Coulthard in four. Wincup, Reynolds, Waters, Holdsworth, Heimgarten, and Deeper Squally. And for Anton, a little bit of a scuff on that car as we pick up Lee Holdsworth. And personal best for him in sector one. He's in the third sector now as he comes out of the hairpin. And the Botlo Ford Mustang. Nice work for him at Sandown to be able to get a trophy for the trouble. And 10-5 for him, so a better number, but didn't improve in the totem. Todd Hazelwood, SS Signs entry into the final corner. Todd got off to a good strong start in the first session earlier on today. He's currently in 19th, and that make that sixth. So he's continued the momentum. And have a look at that, fastest last sector proper, 21-8. That's a very good job by young Todd Hazelwood, and he's one of the people that we haven't heard yet as to what this future deal or his plans for 2020 look like, but he's a man that I think is going to get a ride. Yep. Yeah, he's sweet. <laughs> and uh, he was fourth. I was stumbling my way to it, but fourth in that first session. So, and interesting, when we picked him up on the lap, that ended up being a pretty decent number. He had it well and truly locked in the rear brake as well. So to be able to still stitch the number together was pretty impressive. And this obviously was the next part of that lap. Got away with it. It's all right when you wipe the rear guard on there. In fact, sometimes the rear guard doing that can actually straighten you up. It's no drama at all. It's when you feed the front of it in, like we saw with Anton, that's much more difficult to cope with. Great news also if you weren't with us and we were able to announce this on trackside last night that Lee Holdsworth has been able to renew his agreement with Tickford. He's got another two-year arrangement. He's got truck assist backing him with that. So great news for Lee and his fans. It's always a big relief when you're wheeling and dealing and then you get that secured and, and there's time in that. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm sure he's known for a little while they've been able to put that to bed and that'll be part of the result at Sandown, I'm sure, as well. But uh, having that support, knowing that the team wants to be there and that there's a willingness on all parts to be able to embrace what you're doing and give you some longevity. Race driver years are like dog years. They have you know, <laughs> seven normal years. So every one of them is valuable. Every month is valuable. You get a very small window to ply your trade. Yeah, very true. It's a good explanation. And this one, actually, it's a good point straight away with Simona. We're seeing her in her final full-time drive at the moment. And shout out to Katie Page and everybody from Harvey Norman for supporting this project. And she's done a great job. A lot of young female racing drivers or aspiring female racing drivers have loved the input and work that she's done in the series. She's going to drive for Porsche overseas, but she's... Oh, she's just about in the fence at six. That was amazingly close. I was giving her the biggest crap of all time. And that was almost in. She caught the inside kerb too hard and it flicked the car out to the left and she just gathered it up before she fired in the fence on the left-hand side. So good save. 
So you can hear in the background on the radio, there's a bunch of people going out there with rubber as we check out the replay. So a little bit too much curb was the issue here. And then the understeer, see the front wheels turning, turning, turning. She clipped the tyre bundle. Luckily, she didn't meet the concrete out there and in behind her teammate and team leader, Rick Kelly. Whew, that was a close one because had she gone another couple of metres further up the road with all that lock on understeering, whack the concrete down there, it'd do pretty significant damage. Will Davison's on screen here at the moment for car number 23, Milwaukee Racing entry. He's down the order at the moment in 19. He's on a 10-9 and this lap should prove, and it does, three spots for him because he's mid-sector was a personal best. Courtney's on a good lap. I'm hearing they've made some technical changes to this car over the course of the weekend. They're using a different shock absorber in the car, and that's a very good lap time, 10.46. So that's put him up to fifth. Deep Squale, he's come up a couple of spots to 11th. This is David Reynolds finishing off his lap. Davey now comes up five spots to third with 10.42. Have a look at the margins, Compo. Two tenths of a second separates 12 cars. It's impressive, isn't it? It's great technical skill, great athleticism from the drivers. And they were able to get these things turned and pointed and controlled between these concrete walls is a big story, and Wind Cup just proved exactly why. You almost bowled a wide. Now, his first sector is better than anybody we've seen so far as he makes his run down through 10 to the hairpin in this new apex down the bottom. He gets it back and only just stopped. In fact, it ruins the lap. So it locked up so bad when he fed it a gear that he's run wide out there. And that put pay to what could potentially have been a good lap. Meantime, Waters with a minute to go. One minute, 10.3 in the Monster Energy Ford Mustang. Big signal from him. We know that there's pace in Wind Cup's car, as you would expect. He's been very strong here before. He's down in eighth and may not recover in time to get a lap together based on what you just saw. But it's Waters over Van Gisbergen. Paulie Jones has gone wide at 11 as we pick up McLaughlin once more. So he's drifted a little down to third. He's only six one hundredths behind Van Gisbergen. And that time was a 10-5 on that lap. It was only a tenth and a half slower than his best lap. It was a good save with the rear wheels locked down there at the hairpin for Wing Cup. His first sector was exceptional. James Courtney's been the fastest in sector two, and there was a specific four. Hazelwood is fastest in sector three. If you line all those best sectors up, it's actually a 988, so the conditions are pretty good. Just getting a lap together for everybody. There's a few that are still haven't finished. In fact, Wink Cup might go better because he's just done his personal best mid sector. That was close for Courtney. And James Courtney doesn't improve. Oh, Wink Cup to the top on a 10 3. Now that's quite remarkable given what happened because yep. he was two thirds of the way through the previous lap when he ran wide down at 11. He's recovered, got on with it, and there was enough grip left in the tyre and enough skill in his performance to be able to vault him to the top. The margin <laughs> is 0 0.0057. 57 thousandths of a second, the gap between Wink Cup and Waters, that's crazy. Wink Cup, Waters, Van Gisbergen. Then McLaughlin, Reynolds, Winterbottom, Courtney, Coulthard, Hazelwood, Holdsworth. That group of names that I just rolled out are separated by two tenths of a second. And every one of those guys, when you reference them to next, yep. it's not even in the tenths. It's actually, I think I'm not speaking lies here. Every single one of those 10 drivers in the top 10 is separated by Thousands. hundredths yep. or thousandths of a second. Yep. That's a yep. remarkable session and you can see how hard everybody was trying on the replay with Shane Van Gisberg and got the big lock up going on the run there into turn one. Cool session, literally and on track. So we've completed our two sessions of practice and this means that we're going to see a pretty energized race day tomorrow and Sunday if we can use practice as a guide when you see just how crazy these numbers are at the top mark. So Wind Cup 
It actually surprises me yeah. that he could go back out and do that on the second lap. That's really impressive, isn't it? So 10-3. And look at the margins, folks. This is what I was talking about before. <laughs> this is crazy stuff. 0 0.006, 0.061, 0.067. .06 crazy, crazy times. And when you reference the gap, that's the gap to the leader, not the gap to each other. The gap to each other is crazy tight. Di Pasquale next, he had a little bit of rash on that car at the end of it from Percat. They got the car back out there after damage in the first session. Mostert, then Slade, Heimgartner, Stanaway, Kelly, and further behind him, Will Davison didn't look entirely comfortable out there. Jacobson and Macaulay Jones. Warren Luff, excellent performance, ending up in 21st. That was a great job, wasn't it? And Cam Waters, uh, P2, mate, you got absolutely smoked there at the finish by Jamie <laughs> Wincup. By, I, don't, I, I think we can't even blink that fast. Yeah, look, the boys are going to have to work pretty hard to yeah. find that overnight. <laughs> so um, if they polished it a little bit harder, it probably would have been enough. But well, if, you hadn't, if you hadn't scratched the side of it and damaged oh, yeah. some of your paintwork. Always, work. always yeah. the driver's fault, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sound like my engineers, mate. Absolutely, um, that's where I come from. Yeah, look, pretty happy. We. Uh...